Hello, my name is Gray. And my name is Crystal. And this is Bust the Asian Beauties, a supernatural commentary podcast where I, someone who has seen this show several times, and I, someone who only knows the show through social media, discuss every single episode of Supernatural from start to finish. Also, we are both Asian. Both Asian! So for today's episode, we will be discussing Season 1, Episode 15, The Vendors, written by John Shaban, directed by Peter Ellis. Oh, it's him again. John Shaban again! <laughs> yeah. Uh, if if you guys... Uh, can we talk about the, <laughs> the face gradient here? <laughs> yes! Uh, to the audience of this episode, uh, if you go to our socials and scroll through enough, you'll find a post made by lesbian Mary Winchester of uh, <laughs> basically the faces of all the white man supernatural writers in a sort of gradient to see who looks most similar to who, and it looks amazing. It's like so the, the power of it, the hard work behind it. Just incredible. <laughs> yes, the conceptualization and the execution are both excellent. You guys should see it. It's yeah. so fucking funny. Now every single time John Shaban shows up, or literally any writer shows up, I'll be like, uh huh, where are they in the gradient? <laughs> because it's so fucking funny. John Shaban's in this nice little center spot here. Yes, our friend called it the McElroy area oh god it literally is uh, okay so before going in crystal what did you know about this episode not very much i knew that like this was an episode without any supernatural creatures so it was one of those people are the real monsters episodes and i already and i also knew that there was a girl in it who was evil but i didn't really know anything else about her so I was disappointed that she didn't have more of a role. So we're opening in Hibbing, Minnesota. Basically, we see a kid watching TV in his room, and then he looks outside, and there's some guy in a parking lot and is walking towards his car. There's some weird sound under it, so he looks down, and we don't see what he sees, but he freaks out and then gets pulled under the car and is still screaming and then he sort of disappears and then the boy upstairs just shuts his windows <laughs> i think we're supposed to think he's scared but he literally just looks like a stone cold bitch like he's like not my fucking problem yeah, he's like i don't care mm -hmm. <laughs> and then closes the window <laughs> yeah we fade in to sam and dean talking to the kid and the kid's mother they're dressed up in little sheriff outfits yes. like it's halloween they look so funny uh they're talking to the kid and the mother is kind of like insistent that they don't want to talk because the more they talk about it the more the kid will believe what he saw but sam and dean are doing their usual bit of you just tell us whatever you saw and we'll, we'll accept it no matter what so the kid does that basically it relays what happened like what crystal just said and the mother is like standing unconvinced on the side and then asks the kid you saw all those creepy things happen what were you watching while the creepy things were happening and the kid says oh i was watching godzilla versus mothra which then sparks dean's interest so much that he goes on a tangent about how it's the better godzilla movie and that sam likes the remake and his taste sucks ass because he likes the remake which i guess i don't get because i haven't watched these movies yeah i haven't seen this franchise either but we're, it we're was terrible a supernatural moment. fans as a supernatural fan you sh you can should and must watch every single movie that dean mentions <laughs> Oh, and then uh, the kid says, finally, this the, the, the only important part of this conversation, that when the monster went away, it produced a whining growl. So now we're at a bar, 
And apparently it's called Kugel's Keg, but it looks like it said Kugel's Keg, like the misspelled anime laugh. Dean is throwing darts, Sam's just chilling, and they're discussing the case. Dean thinks that it might just be a regular kidnapping, but Sam says that John's journal mentioned that this area had a lot of missing people. The most missing people per capita, like out of all the counties in the US or something. Ooh, talk nerdy to me, Sam. And then they think that there's a phantom attacker that grabs people and Dean's like, okay, yeah, sure, we, we can look into it tomorrow. But Sam wants to go to the motel and go to sleep. Dean thinks that this is unnecessary and wants to keep hanging out at the bar. And he calls Sam grandma for wanting their fun to be over so fast. He tells Sam to head out and that he'll meet him there, but he has to pee first. And like, he's heading to the bathroom, which has this like neon sign on it that says men's. And like, I don't know, something, something about Dean heading to a neon lit men's bathroom in a bar just makes me really think that he like made some eye contact with a guy earlier at the bar today and is like heading back there for a little fun. Oh, come on. <laughs> okay, listen. Later, later, right? Like, Sam goes missing and Dean goes outside and he's like, oh no, where's Sam? And then he yeah, goes around it's asking been an people, hour. Have you seen anything? Yeah, have you seen anything happen in the last hour? Like, <laughs> Dean either, like, has IBS or was sucking a dick, okay? Like, and I think that he was sucking a dick. <laughs> like, I've... I just know it. I know it in my heart that he was sucking a dick. Like, God. I don't care what John Chaban meant here, but I know it. <laughs> I just realized when I said, oh, come on, earlier, I sounded like such a fucking homophobe. I'm not. <laughs> Please don't persecute me. <laughs> I'm making a new tab on the spreadsheet for gray homophobia moments. <laughs> Dean should be allowed to suck as many dicks in men's bathrooms as he wants. Love is love. So Dean goes outside. Uh, no, no. Well, so Sam, Sam goes outside. Sam goes Dean's outside. sucking a dick. <laughs> yeah, while well, Dean is <laughs> in the men's bathroom. He is walking towards the car when he hears a noise. So he turns on his flashlight and then he bends down to look under the car where the noise is coming from. And we think he's gonna get grabbed, and it's all suspense music. But it's just a cat! It's a cat, and the cat is yeah, like hissing it's a cute at him. Cat. Yeah. So he does a little laugh, which was so adorable. He looks yeah, so good. Yeah, that was really cute. He looks really relieved and, and sweet. Yeah. Too bad he gets kidnapped immediately after. <laughs> My brother would give you this puppy dog look and you would just kidnap him immediately. So he gets up and then he proceeds to go to the car. At which point, he just puts down this little folder that he has of the case on the side of the car. And then we go to a shot of his feet, which is supposed to tell us that somebody's watching him and somebody's about to grab him. We cut to later where... Dean is walking out from the bar and he walks towards the car and then he sees the folder that Sam left behind. He realizes that Sam is missing. He starts talking to the people who are going out of the bar. He's asking them if they've seen anyone within the last hour. He looks up and he sees a surveillance camera. And then he's like, oh, okay, that's a clue that can tell me where Sam is. And then he keeps on looking around and he says, Sam. And then we cut to black. <laughs> you know that tweet that's like supernatural is just 15 years of two brothers stumbling Going around Sam. like crying, <laughs> like, yeah, crying drunk girls at a bar <laughs> looking for each other? <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Sam! Teen! Where are you? Yeah, so now we're at a police department. And Dean's talking to a cop who I think we later find out her name is Kathleen. He's impersonating a guy called Gregory Washington. And he's saying that 
He's covering a missing person's case. He's looking for his cousin who went missing by a bar last night. Kathleen asks if Sam has a drinking problem and he says, Sam, two beers and he's doing karaoke. <laughs> Which is, which is very cute. Also, do we never get to see Sam sing in all of Supernatural? No, I don't think so. But don't they let Dean sing, like, twice? They let Dean sing in season 10, jokingly. Right, the I'm too sexy for my shirt. Yeah, and season 15, seriously, like, they let him sing for real these. Oh yeah, cause fucking Jensen Ackles was trying to promote Radio Company or some shit. <laughs> yeah, all I can think of while saying that was that one post by one of our mutuals that was like... Yes! Uh, yes, the, like, the one about Mick Jagger? <laughs> like, okay, we'll, we'll repeat the post, but uh, the post goes like, uh, you know that, you know that, joke that John Mulaney has about how Mick Jagger was like in a stadium for 50 years with people shouting his name that's basically what happened to Jensen Ackles and that's all that person can think about every time Jensen Ackles sings that's also all I can think about now <laughs> yeah oh it's not fair that we never get to see Sam do karaoke like oh god I want to watch Sam just like belt Celine Dion like, we deserved that, Sam deserved that, we all deserve it. I mean, Jared can play the guitar. So, like, we could have had a moment where Jared's Sam is not like... a real person, so I don't see how that's relevant, but I see. <laughs> no, I know this because I saw a post once that's like, oh, poor Jared, he's so insecure about his guitar skills, but like, everyone else is so supportive. And it's like a picture, it's like a video of like the cast like huddling around him while he plays the guitar and like hyping him up. And it's so fucking funny. Like I watch it and I was like, this is, I don't, why am I, what am I doing with my life? So Kathleen asks for the full name of the missing person. Dean says, Sam Winchester. And she asks, like the rifle? Is this the first time that we, like, hear about the name inspiration here i think so yeah well that's fun i guess they were like well eventually we need to point out how clever we were when we came up with the names of these characters may as well do it now so kathleen typed sam's name into a computer and there's a sam winchester record and a dean winchester record <laughs> And immediately we go, uh-oh. And then we finally find out why no one has tried to arrest Dean in the many episodes since Skin. It's because everyone thinks he's dead for realsies. So, I guess Dean's safe. So Kathleen brings up that Dean is suspected of murder. And Dean says, oh yeah, he was kind of the black sheep of the family. Handsome, Handsome though. though. <laughs> God, you're insufferable. <laughs> Dean's like, okay, well, can I look at the surveillance camera by the highway? Maybe it'll show us some clues. Um, Kathleen makes him fill out a missing persons report. And Dean starts his wheedling that will continue through this episode where he's like, like, he's my family, I look out for the kid, you have to let me go with you, you have to let me help. When she's resistant... He mentions that none of the missing people so far have ever come back. And then, Sam's my responsibility, and he's coming back. I'm bringing him back. Kathleen's showing Dean the photos from the surveillance camera, and basically around the time that Sam disappeared, there was a rusty truck driving away <laughs> that was... <laughs> Ever since the finale, oh. every time anyone says rusty, the word rusty just <laughs> yeah. hurts you. <laughs> yeah. There's a rusty truck and there's the license plate on it looks completely new, so the truck was probably stolen. And so that means that Sam was probably kidnapped by someone driving that truck. And just as that's being discussed, some old van is driving by and it sounds like a high-pitched whining noise and Dean's like oh that was the high-pitched like shrieking that the kid was talking about that sounded like a monster it was a car oh my god it's another monster truck <laughs> Sam wakes up in like this dingiest shit 
cage in like the middle of a barn. And he looks around and he sees that there's other cages in the barn. And in the, one of the cages, there is a guy sleeping. So he starts rattling the cage and he starts trying to kick it down. In a scene that, where he looks super hot. <laughs> yeah, no, he's strong and his knuckles are kind of bloody. Like, hi. He's like doing fucking chin-ups on the cage. Yeah, he's wearing just a shirt. And you can see his specs through it, and he looks good. Yeah, there's a there's a scene in the Sam Slumber Party AMV, I think, that's about- on, like, a line about his titties that I think comes from this episode. <laughs> He's suffering horribly and being kidnapped. <laughs> that. <laughs> but he looks good. He does. While he's kicking down the cage, the guy from the other cage wakes up from the noise and uh sam realizes that this guy is alvin jenkins so like the guy from earlier who went missing and they're looking for he tells the guy that like he's looking for him and the guy immediately is like oh you're doing a piss poor job of looking for me so we know that this jenkins guy is fucking insufferable i mean he's in a cage he's been in a <laughs> cage for a while i get it yeah, I mean, yes, but like they they really make a point of making him like not listen. That yeah. th that was his personality type. Sam asks like, "Do you know where we are?" And Jenkins say, "We're in the middle of nowhere. It smells like the country." And Sam asks like, "Have you seen the people who took you? What do they look like?" Well, have you seen what took you? Yeah, right? yeah. What took you? Like He's very adamant about the whole what thing. And I guess maybe because I don't, in regular conversation, it's not like I speak English fully. If, if someone asked me, like, what took you? I wouldn't even bat an eye. So Jenkins being like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Like, just say they're people or something. Like, they're wearing hoods. Yeah, but they really wanted to build up the suspense. The barn door opens and two men wearing black coats walk in. So their heads are covered and everything. And they're carrying big wooden sticks, which they start hitting the cages with while the other person like uh, unlocks the cages and it's important to note that the cages are locked and unlocked through this electric mechanism so it's not the key no actually it is a key how would you describe the lock there's there's a key but there's also some kind of electric mechanism yeah. involved I like don't really the know. keyhole is very far from the cage so it's not like sam and jenkins can just reach the keyhole and Pick it. They start hitting the cage to make Jenkins move away, and then they open the cage and give him food. They do the same to Sam's cage. D did Sam get food? I didn't see him get food. Oh, really? But they hit Sam's cage as well. They just hit him, <laughs> like, for fun. <laughs> no! That's so sad. I'm so sorry, Sam. More foreshadowing for Sam in cages. <laughs> uh, they go out, and Sam is in shock. He's like, oh my god, I'll be damned. They're just people. So they continue talking about the circumstances of the cage. So when do they feed Jenkins, etc, etc. What's Ned Beatty? Do you know what that is? Yeah, so I didn't understand the reference either, so I looked it up. And he's an actor, and I think one of his most famous roles is like one where he gets kidnapped and raped by a bunch of like random country guys so yeah oh because later he calls them a bunch of psycho hillbilly rednecks looking for love in all the wrong places so he's very fixated on them being lower class country people who are also gay and rapists like that's that's sort of what jenkins thinks is going on so sam is unconvinced by this by this remark that it's ned bt time uh jenkins asks like if that's not what's gonna happen what do they want and sam says oh i don't know and then we got back to kathleen and dean they're driving along trying to find where sam was taken and they know that the truck was not caught by a certain 
traffic camera, but it was caught by one earlier, so it must have turned off into a side road somewhere in between. Meanwhile, something comes up on Kathleen's computer, and she realizes something. So she's like, hey, Dean, or sorry, hey, Gregory. <laughs> Succession supernatural crossover. Oh! <laughs> Yeah, hey cousin Greg, I ran your badge number. <laughs> and it says here you work at A and T. <laughs> is that is that the name of the? Uh, I forgot. Whatever. ACN, ACN is the name of the news network, but it's yeah. But doesn't doesn't he not work with the ATN section? I thought he worked with the parks. Oh, uh, you haven't watched enough Succession. <laughs> yeah, so she says, hey cousin Greg, uh, quick question. I just looked up your badge. And it says that it was stolen, and also there's a picture of you, and it's like, well, it's clearly not him. It's like an older, heavier, black man. And <laughs> Dean says, I lost some weight, and I've got that Michael Jackson skin disease. <laughs> oh, Mr. Yamashiro's son, part two. <laughs> I genuinely laughed out loud when he said that. <laughs> I was like, okay, this is funny. <laughs> Kathleen's like, okay, get out of the car, time to arrest you. And Dean goes, like, hey, that's fine, I'll cooperate, but, like, please first let me find Sam. Um, Kathleen's not allowing him, and Dean says, look into my eyes and tell me if I'm lying about this, which is just so fucking funny. Every time Dean tries to convince people of things, it's so fucking funny. Like, he just seems to think that, like, if he meow meows it up, like, people will just automatically understand him and be on his side. And he's, like, he's really into the look into my eyes, because he does it with Cass, too, right? Yeah! Yeah, he does it in, uh, The Man Who yeah, Would yeah, Be yeah. King, right? Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe it worked with Kathleen. I mean, I get it, because it's her, her brother, right? Yeah, like, like that, that's they, why. They did, like, some exposition and some backstory, but, like, even then, it's like, this man can be dangerous. Yeah, it, I mean, I think she take she takes... A little while to trust him, so I think that that, like, it was unrealistic, but I could somewhat believe it. And also, he's unarmed. I feel like if he had a gun on him, like, she would probably act completely differently. Kathleen's not budging, still, even though she looked into Dean's eyes and everything. Like, how could she? Still not. Um, right, so Dean's, like, tearing up a little. And he says, look, here's the thing. When we were young, I pretty much pulled him from a fire. And ever since then, I've felt responsible for him. Like, it's my job to keep him safe. I'm just afraid if we don't find him fast. And, like, his throat starts getting all clogged and he's, like, crying harder. He's like, please, he's my family. He's so pathetic. <laughs> it's fun to watch. And Kathleen's like... Uh-uh, gonna arrest you, but then she sees a photo in her car, and it's of her and her brother, and she looks sad, and she's like, Ugh, I've changed my mind. So she's like, okay, fine, we can go find Sam. We go back to Sam and Jenkins, and Sam is trying to... So he's trying to pull this thing that is like a metal pipe slash wire slash whatever from above his cage and jenkins is like oh what's your name again and sam's like it's sam and then jenkins say jenkins says i give it up sammy there's no way out and sam says don't call me sammy yeah it's so good because after jenkins said that i paused the episode to write down the note don't call him sammy and then sam said it right after like immediately after he says that the metal pipe slash wire slash whatever gets pulled down and a small piece of metal falls to the floor and then sam picks it up and says oh it's a bracket <laughs> I don't know what that is. I don't know how metal <laughs> tools and parts work. Yeah, me too. I just found it so funny that he was like, oh my god, it's a bracket. Like, obviously, a bracket is holding up <laughs> that thing. Like, you, prob you probably saw it before it fell, but whatever. And then Jenkins is like, you know, extremely pessimistic. He's like, oh, what are we going to do with the bracket? Suddenly, 
the cage unlocks. Jenkins' cage. Sam's remains locked. Uh, Jenkins realizes that when Sam was pulling the thing, he must have shorted something. So he gets out of the cage and Sam immediately is like, you have to get back in there. This seems too easy. But Jenkins doesn't listen. He says that he's going to ask for help. He's going to get out of here and he's going to send people back for Sam. So he gets out. Jenkins is walking outside. Um, it's like some kind of muddy woods area. And there's this house that looks pretty beat down. Um, he finds this little knife on the ground. And he says, like, thank you to God. Um, which is quite ironic when we later find out that the weapons are deliberately left out by the benders to make the hunt more fun. So he's walking through the woods and then he hears noises and it's like creepy laughter and whooping as he starts, it starts raining also and he's running and there's some guy in camouflage who jumps him. Jenkins stabs him um, and then keeps running but then some other guy shows up and shoves a knife through Jenkins' leg. Aw, oh, Jenkins is now running away. Okay, also at this point we notice that the men, they're in camouflage and also they have like, what, like mud smeared on their faces yeah. for the camouflage? But like, for a second I like thought it was legit blackface and I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> but, <laughs> no. It's still quite uncomfortable. Yeah, I think the intention was like... Actually, I don't know, like to make them look dirty, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I feel like it was like for camouflage, so like like their skin wouldn't like reflect the moonlight very much. But it kind of just... It was, it was highly uncomfortable to look at. Mm -hmm. So Jenkins is still running. The two men are still like laughing at him and chasing him. Um, Jenkins seems to be starting to get away, but then we see that there's this tripwire on the ground, and he stumbles over it and falls. Um, Jenkins is now on his back on the ground, and the two men rise up above him with knives, like, ready to stab him in the chest. It cuts to Sam, but we can hear Jenkins scream. So, we go to Dean and Kathleen holding a uh, coffee. Which I find so funny that, like, Kathleen was like, look, this felon is... I'll buy him coffee. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let's, let's buy coffee. Let's have some coffee. So Dean says, like, I don't mean to press my luck, but... And then Kathleen is like, oh, your luck is so pressed. And this is, like, a recurring thing that Dean says throughout the episode, so that's fun. And Dean asks, like, why are you helping me out anyway? Kathleen then reveals her backstory, which is that Three years ago, her brother Riley went missing, just like Sam. They were not able to find him. She says, I know what it feels like to feel responsible for someone and for them. And then she cuts herself. And then she says, come on, let's keep at it. So they pull over to like a little side road. Dean like steps out of the car, but Kathleen tells him that uh, he's not coming with her. But Dean is like insisting that, oh no, I'll go with you, I'll go with you, it's fine, it's fine. So Kathleen like makes him promise that they, they would go together, but Dean will let Kathleen take the lead and won't do anything that will, you know, harm them, etc, etc. Kathleen tells Dean to shake on it. So as, the, as Dean goes in for the shake, she cuffs him. And then attaches him to the car and then walks away. It's fun. I enjoyed that. This is like a common thing that people do, right? Like uh, in media at least. I feel like it is. Yeah, like I've seen it happen in plenty of shows. Dean should have watched even more TV than he already does to avoid falling for that one. Kathleen's now walking into the woods and sees the house that we saw earlier. She knocks on the door and a little girl comes out. She's got like straggly hair and she's like got dirt on her. She's uh, like a perfect little evil horror girl. 
her her vibes are impeccable. Yeah, she seems to like not really be used to interaction with people or just sort of is talking kind of awkwardly. Kathleen asks who she is and the girl asks who are you? Uh, Kathleen introduces herself um, and the girl says that her name is Missy and that her mom is dead and her dad's not home. Kathleen asks if she can come in, but Missy says no, and Kathleen is like, okay, then, like, here, and shows her a picture of Sam, and is like, have you seen this guy? And Missy starts smiling. Yes, go Kathleen's Missy. Kathleen's like, what? And Missy says, that's gonna hurt. And behind Kathleen, like, this guy hits her in the head with a shovel, and she falls on the ground. It's so good. Yeah, it's so fun. <laughs> and, yeah. Yeah, and the dad's like, Hey, Missy, go tell your brothers that I want to see them. And Missy, in her, like, evil little evil girl voice, is like, Yes, daddy, and walks away. <laughs> this is an episode where I really wish I'd watched a lot more horror media than I have. Because, like, I feel like this is definitely borrowing from a lot of iconic movies out here. And I just don't know what they are. Have you watched much horror? I haven't seen much horror. Because it's not my jam. But I have played <laughs> Red Dead Redemption. <laughs> as we know, because I <laughs> yeah. I love mentioning this right. video game. But like, uh, it's just that, you know, there are two th American things that I'm really into. That are like defined by their Americanness, mm -hmm. And it's Supernatural and Red Dead Redemption. Right. So like... This episode is like the combination of the two because it's like backwards America. Um, I mean, I definitely like this episode from a horror perspective. I do, I think, have a bit of an issue with like backwards horror and the way that the benders are portrayed. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like during the hunt, the brothers laugh, they don't talk. We don't hear the benders talk until way later in the episode. Like, they're portrayed as a, in a very animalistic way. Which is, like, fine and fun, because, like, they're hunters or whatever, but, like, I don't know, just their whole portrayal feels quite classist on um, the way that Jenkins is, like, oh, fucking country people, blah, blah, blah. Um, the way Dean later makes a joke about, like, country people, like, engaging in incest. Like, it's just all... Yeah, I don't know. Like... Can't they just be people? Yeah. Can't they just like, be people? This is what I'm gonna say. Like, for an episode where the whole point is that people are fucking monsters, you really made a point yeah. to make the people as unpeople like as you mm. possibly can. Right. And, like, specifically, like, poor and unsanitary because they're poor. Yes. Like, I don't know. Yeah, I just think that, like, for example, I know that season seven, um, has like attempts like some kind of anti-capitalism rhetoric yeah. with dick roman being the bad guy but like dick roman is a leviathan like he's a monster who literally like devours people and they sort of use that as like a metaphor for capitalism or whatever but like here where they're like having actual people be monsters yeah they're making them as un person as possible like i wish i wish that if they were doing an episode about people being monsters that it would be about like power and wealth making people monstrous not just like these people being quote unquote crazy as dean keeps calling them so we cut to a scene that is often gifed uh a while ago we were just talking about dean sucking dick but like <laughs> i i see this scene like gift a lot so that it looks like Dean's dick is getting sucked. So, like, good for him. <laughs> I don't think I've seen this. You have it? <laughs> I'll, I'll try to look for it I... and show you. <laughs> but, but, like, basically the scene is Dean is, like, trying to figure out how to unlock his cuffs. So he's reaching out to the side of the car for the antenna of the car. So he's reaching out for that. And it's, like kind of comedic because like he can't reach it and it's quite funny and he's stretching a lot but then uh he starts hearing noises basically going to his direction and he realizes that the people 
probably took Kathleen and are gonna take me now. So he very urgently like gets the wire and picks his cuffs. But the brothers are getting nearer and nearer. And it's like a little suspense of like, are they gonna catch Dean? Are they not gonna catch Dean? But they don't because Dean uh, was able to uncuff himself and run away. Jared and Lee, which are the two brothers that are hunting these people. <laughs> it's so funny that one of them <laughs> is named Jared. <laughs> yeah. Go into the car and then they're laughing and talking about how they've never seen their father that angry before but also the police have never followed them before so this is the first for them so now we're back to the barn and kathleen's there in a cage um they've like taken her uniform and her hair is all messed up which ugh, is bad to look at yeah why take her uniform why leave her in the shirt yeah like what's yeah, like, what was the point? I don't they know. They also it took just, Sam's well, jacket. We also see that they took Sam's jacket, yeah. right. So it's not the misogyny. <laughs> yeah, it's not a- yeah, no, we got- we got Sam's tits and we got Kathleen's tits. Hashtag equality. So true. <laughs> Kathleen sees Sam and is like, oh, are you Sam Winchester? Your cousin's looking- Your cousin Greg. Yeah, <laughs> your cousin Greg! Like, <laughs> your cousin Greg's looking for you, and Sam's like, oh, yay, we're gonna be rescued. Where is he? And Kathleen's like, um, so I, um, handcuffed him to my car? And Sam's like, well, god damn it. And then the door opens, and we see, like, two boots come in and a pair of jeans, and we're like, oh no, is it the Benders or is it Dean? And we pan it up. It looks immediately like Dean. Um, I feel like when it was at the boots, I wasn't sure. When we saw the bottom of the jacket, I was like, ah, uh, okay, it's yeah, him. Yeah, you see the bow legs and you're like, that's fucking Dean. <laughs> oh, yeah, I guess I'm not as much of a bow leg connoisseur as you, so I couldn't tell. Yeah, so it's Dean. And he sees Sam, and he's really relieved. He's like, Sam, are you hurt? It's so good to see you. Um, and then he sees Kathleen there. He's like, oh yeah, I know a trick or two. I got out of the cuffs. And he's trying to figure out the locks, but he can't really. It seems like there has to be a key that he has to find. He and Sam talk a bit about the Jenkins, um, about how they're just people, and I'm sure Kathleen's being really weirded out about how they're talking like it could have not been people. <laughs> Sam mentions the whole Jenkins situation and how it doesn't make any sense. And yeah, Dean says, with our usual playmates, there's rules, there's patterns, but with people, they're just crazy. Boo! I mean, there were patterns with this one. Like, you were able to find it. Right. Oh, I just feel like there was, like, so much interesting stuff they could have done with this episode, given that it's a People Are the Real Monsters episode, given that it's about a family of hunters. But I just feel like they really, they really dropped the ball on this one. And Dean says, oh, whenever they kidnap someone, they seem to take their car, too. So there's a bunch of cars in the back. And Kathleen asks if he saw a black Mustang about 10 years old. And Dean's like, yeah, so that was her brother's, and he definitely got hunted to death. So Dean heads out to find the keys, and Sam tells him to be careful. So Dean is walking inside a room, and it's uh, very dark, so he has his flashlight out, and he's looking around, and there are jars and jars of things, <laughs> uh, like yeah, like organs, organs, right? Like body parts. It's really fun how they just pulled in every single horror movie aesthetic into this episode. They were like, we're only gonna get one non-paranormal episode, so let's have, like, the backwoods, let's have the hunting, let's have organs and jars. Like, there's so much happening. He continues walking around and he sees Polaroids of basically the two brothers, Jared and Lee, standing next to dead bodies. Oh, the transcript says one of them is Jenkins. I didn't notice that. Yeah. I thought it was just some random guy. No, so remember Dean picks up the photo and he flips it over so he can see the face better. Yeah. And it's so that we and he know that they, they done got Jenkins. No, I thought it was just a random guy still. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> yeah, I mean, his facial hair is pretty clearly Jenkins. I, I have face blindness for white men. 
Yeah, that was John Chaban, actually. <laughs> that was jo- it could be John Chaban. It could be Jeremy Carver. It could be Robert Marens. We don't know. So he says the line again. <laughs> and he says it by saying, I'll say it again. <laughs> Which I thought was so funny. Like, yeah, we get it. Like, self working. <laughs> so he says, I'll say it again. Demons I get. People are crazy. Boo. Boo. So he goes upstairs, and then there is old timey music playing. It's very atmospheric, actually. The scene was very fun. Yeah, it's fun. Papa Bender. <laughs> As the transcript says, <laughs> which I think is so funny, uh, the dad, the father of the family, is in the kitchen and he is cutting apart something. So we can assume it's like human remains, I guess. Yeah, I wish we got to like properly see him carving up Jenkins' corpse. Like they could have gone harder with the cannibalism this episode. Yeah, like that would have been fun to like, see. Like we could have seen like. A Hannibal-esque scene yeah. where he cuts up exactly. the foot of the person. That would have been fun. I feel like this episode is fairly reminiscent of- I haven't watched Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but I read the Wikipedia summary after I watched Tinashe's latest music video. <laughs> so I feel like maybe they thought that if they went too hard on the cannibalism thing, people would be like, this is so clearly just Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah. Um, but also, yeah, it would have been really fun to see, like, a family dinner scene where, like, they're serving up Jenkins. At some point, Dean is walking, and he bumps into some chimes. And at first, he's like, oh, it's chimes, I have to shut this thing so that Papa Bender doesn't hear me. And then he takes a double look. Oh my god, they're bones. So, like, there's jaws and skulls, and that's Mm -hmm. what the chimes are made of. So, you know, very fun, oh, very hard. It's so fun. Yeah, who do you think in the family is, like, making all the bone furniture? <laughs> What's your guess? Like, I would say uh, Lee, because he has uh, the name that I like the most. Yeah, okay, yeah, I'll go with that. <laughs> um, I think Lee works. Um, well, I guess I've been wondering what Missy's role in this family tradition is. Like, I'm assuming she's kind of too young so far to, like, join into the hunt. Later on, like, Papa Bender says, we pass this down from father to son. And then they pan specifically Mm -hmm. to Missy, which I was like, huh. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, so, yeah, I think it's, it's not her turn yet to hunt people, but I feel like maybe they let her play around with the bones a bit to get acclimated to the whole corpses thing. Yeah, so I think maybe she made the wind chime. He keeps on walking and then he notices, you know, some keys. So he goes for it and then he notices some other things like a jar full of teeth. He gets distracted. He's like picking up the jar of teeth instead of just grabbing the box of keys. Like, come (laughs) on, Dean. And then he hears a crick behind him. So he turns around, and then he sees a little girl. Missy. He sees Missy. And yeah, and we know she is a badass bitch, but he doesn't. Yeah, and he says, okay, okay, I'm not gonna hurt you. And then she says, with a little smile, I know. <laughs> I know. Go, Missy! <laughs> and then, so and then good! She, and then she throws her little knife towards Dean's jacket so it sticks him to the wall basically. And then we start a little fight scene. Missy calls her father and Jared and Lee starts attacking Dean. So yeah, it's just a fight scene. I have no idea how to describe it. It's yeah, it's pretty fun to watch. It's fun to watch they're but getting like, thrown it's around not the like room a lot. Uh a describable fight scene like they're just fighting because you know other fight scenes in supernatural like sam cuts his hand with the with the knife like Mm. etc etc but like this one is just whatever Uh, dean gets thrown against a wall and there's like blood on his face and he's sort of on the ground yeah and he's like i'm gonna kick your ass first and then yours and then daddy bender hits him at the back of the head and he falls to the ground. So now Dean's tied up 
in a chair and the family is around him talking about how fun it would be to fun sorry how fun it would be to hunt him oh i have a i have a remark they never say bender in the episode no um does missy ever yeah missy doesn't say her last name right she just says i'm missy yeah so they never say bender so did they just go oh fuck we didn't put bender in the episode but like we already have the title so might as well or is the benders a reference (laughs) Not that I'm aware of. Yeah, me too. This is what we get for being so uncultured. (laughs) Ugh, sorry for not being white. (laughs) So, uh, yeah, they're talking about how fun it would be to hunt Dean. And Dean goes, you gotta be kidding me. That's what this is about? You yahoos hunt people? Dean, what do you do? Like, with your time? Huh? (laughs) Like, what do you do? No, I guess, like, the difference yeah. between them is that, you know, these people enjoy it, and, like, Sam and Dean are scared, yeah. you know? Like, they make a point. I'm a- okay, I'm aware of how much they enjoy torturing that vampire in the finale, no, yeah, though. that's what I was like, gonna say. They, like, currently, currently they are scared. Yeah, like, they make a point at the beginning of the show that Sam and Dean are, like, scared of hunting, and Sam specifically gets nightmares from it, right? Remember? But <laughs> as we proceed into the show, they start they start losing that, like, self-awareness that this is a terrible job. And, yeah. like, it does become more and more like they're the fucking benders, but for monsters. And sometimes for people. <laughs> and sometimes for people. Yeah, so, yeah, the dad asks, you ever killed before? And Dean says, that depends on what you mean. I love how the dad doesn't, like, ask about that. He's not like, oh, you mean, like, you stepped on an ant once? Like, he's just too caught up in his fun little monologue. Yeah, he doesn't fucking care um, about what yeah. Dean has to say. And you Yeah, know, he doesn't care him. about Dean's <laughs> ass. Right. Oh, I love, yeah, what if, like, he caught someone and they were like, yeah, I love killing people all the time. I do it so often. <laughs> like, would he just still keep going? <laughs> So, yeah, he says, I've hunted all my life, just like my father and his before him. I've hunted deer and bear. I even got a cougar once. But the best hunt is human. There's nothing like it. Holding their life in your hands, seeing the fear in their eyes just before they go dark, makes you feel powerful alive. It's a good villain monologue. Yeah. Good for him. Um, and Dean calls him a sick puppy. (laughs) Go, Dean. Like, they're allowed to say bastard on Supernatural, right? Yeah, they they are. You're a sick puppy. (laughs) The dad says, this is where we find out that he gives the people that he hunts a weapon on purpose to give them a fighting chance so that the hunt's more fun. And he calls it a family tradition that's passed down father to son. And yeah, as that's being said, the camera pans specifically to Missy, who isn't even, like, gonna get her, like, boss-ass bitch murder era, because she's probably just, I don't know, going somewhere else after this episode. Ugh. Uh, yeah, and he says that they only really hunt one or two people a year. Usually the cops don't go after them. The dad asks if Dean is with, quote-unquote, that pretty cop, Which begins the sort of gendered language used against Kathleen that continues throughout this episode that makes me highly uncomfortable. But, like, they're making it, you know, they're making the villain Yeah, it's bad, like, on purpose. Yeah, like, I get that, but also it's- I just think it's striking that- that Sam and Dean don't get insulted, like, at all by the Benders. Like, the Benders are very big on dehumanizing people and feeling like they have power above them. But they never really insult Sam or Dean, they just try to kill them. With Kathleen, they try to kill her and they call her a bitch, like, 20 times. Yeah. Also, like, when we we see the pictures, right, it's all men. So, like, probably they don't get, like, a female victim a lot. So that's why, like, they get one and they're like super into it for some fucking reason. Dean's like, okay, I'll answer your questions if you promise not to make me into an ashtray. Um, this doesn't go over well. Oh yeah, because he gets burned later. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, like the dad takes out a hot poker from the fireplace and is ready to burn Dean's eye out. 
in an amazing shot that they linger on for too long. So like you're aware it's amazing, but you're also like, come on, you're just showing off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Peter Ellis. Yeah, and then poor, and then this is when Dean makes the joke that makes no sense, which is, how about it's not nice to marry your sister? Which is like, okay, cool, I'm glad we're continuing to make fun of country people for being poor and quote-unquote uncultured, that's fun. But also, Dean said anti-wincest king. <laughs> <laughs> Dean, Dean has a Tumblr blog and he writes Wincest DNI in the bio. And the dad's like, you have to tell me if the cops are gonna come looking for you because I need to protect my family. And Dean's like, oh, eat me. No way, you actually might. Like, that wasn't even a good joke, Dean. Like, but I get it, whatever. Like, there's a hot poker near your eye. You, you can't come up with the best jokes yet. Um, yeah, and then this is where... Papa Bender says, you think this is funny? You brought this down on my family. So see, like, again, they could have gone way harder on the parallels with, like, hunting family that will do anything to protect their own, but they just sort of breeze past it. Ugh. He's like, okay, well, let's- we're gonna hunt tonight, and Dean- you get to pick who's getting hunted. The boy or the cop puts Dean in a pretty difficult position, but like, if I was Dean, I would have just said the cop like immediately. <laughs> like I wouldn't yeah. even. I I like I just watched this episode recently, and even I was like, oh, he's gonna say the cop, right? And then he didn't. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> well, like I know that he says Sam because he thinks like, Sam oh, maybe it. Sam can yeah. like take these guys. So like, like yeah, I would not have risked it. I would have been like, oh, you're asking me, great. Um, yeah, go for Kathleen. <laughs> like, go right ahead. Dean's trying to refuse to choose and Papa Bender burns his chest with the hot poker and then puts it like right near his eye. Uh, Dean starts freaking out and says, yeah, take the guy, take the guy. The dad sends his sons out to do it, but he says, like, don't let him out of the cage, just shoot him right there. All uh, which obviously freaks Dean out. And then the dad continues, when you're done with the boy, shoot the bitch too. Ugh. Ugh. I think specifically I wrote down here, don't talk like that in front of your daughter. <laughs> like, yeah. Missy's right there. Like, come on. Be a good influence, Papa Bender. Exactly. Like, the murder thing is, like, chill. Like, whatever. Like, family business, go ahead. I'm not gonna go against your customs here. But, like, like, drink a little bit of respect women juice in front of your 13-year-old daughter. Like, come on. Oh, I was just gonna say, and yeah, the reason that he wants them both to be shot is that he doesn't want them to have the chance to get out because more cops might start coming. Yeah. So, Lee enters the barn. He opens Sam's cage, which is so unnecessary. Just shoot Sam. Literally, just shoot him. And then he opens the Sam's cage, and then he aims the gun at Sam. Uh, we see Sam, like, grab the bracket. Yeah. <laughs> for what? <laughs> for what is the bracket for? I mean, it works! But we don't see it work. Yeah, but we assume that he, he got the better of Lee with the bracket. Yeah. So he grabs the bracket, and then we cut back to the house with Dean and Papa Bender and Missy and the other guy. And we hear screaming. Dean says, uh, if you hurt my brother, I'll kill you. I'll kill you all. Fun. Yeah, he's yelling really loud. It's, it's a good scene. I enjoy when Dean gets a bit unhinged. So Papa Bender starts calling out for Lee. We cut back to the cage where Sam is has taken the upper hand and he's grabbing the gun some tries to fire the gun but it doesn't work so he throws it away and basically imprisons lee in the cage yeah also the whole time his like chest is heaving up and down you can really see his titties through the great t-shirt this is his hot boy moment so in the living room because lee is not responding papa bender like asks the other brother to go with him to the barn so they go, they find Lee unconscious, 
and they tried to open the lights but apparently sam like blew the fuse or something so they go to look around the barn for sam and kathleen but sam is like located in some haze and kathleen opens a cabinet which she closes immediately in a shot that looked so out of place uh jared goes up to the cabinet and starts shooting it because he thinks that kathleen is in there he opens the cabinet and it's empty and then kathleen jumps him yeah like from like like another floor of the barn like she falls on top of his back it's a fun shot yeah she jumps him and then uh like they start tackling each other but jared ends up uh having the upper hand afterwards and he's about to shoot kathleen when sam comes in yeah also he specifically calls her you stupid bitch yeah like they're they're really doing this here so <laughs> there's there's like a bluff th thing that happens when sam attacks jared because like he attacks jared and jared is about to shoot him but sam ducks so jared ends up shooting papa bender instead so papa bender is on the ground and then Sam grabs the gun and hits Jared in the face, and they all collapse, and then we cut to black. This is a metaphor for how Sam Winchester, the character, like, killed Jared Padalecki, the guy, <laughs> by being the bestest little guy ever and rendering Jared Padalecki obsolete. So true. <laughs> so Sam takes Jared and then puts him in the same cage as Lee. And then he locks the cage. But Papa Bender is still on the floor of the barn. And Kathleen is pointing a gun at him. She tells Sam that he can go look for Dean and save him from Missy. Kathleen remains behind and she's talking to Papa Bender. She says, you killed my brother. Why? I just want to know why. Papa Bender says, because it's fun. And then Kath fires the gun. Okay, so what do you think of this scene? I mean, cops should not just kill people, but like for like in the horror genre, like people kill people all the time and it's fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, it just made me uncomfortable because later on she tells Sam and Dean that like he oh, fought for yeah, his no, life. Oh, yeah, no, absolutely. Right? Like he fought for his yeah, life. Yeah, no. Yeah, she's saying that she killed him out of self-defense. And, like, she didn't. She did it out of revenge. Yeah. And that's not okay. Like, it, it just reminded me of... Because, like, you know, like, war on drugs in the Philippines, like, every single day we would get, like, police officers saying that, like, oh, nan laban, mm -hmm. like, this person uh, acted, defend, tried to defend himself, so, like, whatever, we shot him. And it's just, like, it, right. it, 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 it took me back and I was like, oh, okay, this is quite unpleasant. But I get it, like... Um, the mechanics yeah. of a horror genre is different. So I'm not saying that, like, oh, uh, you know. You know what I'm saying. No, I mean, it is... Yeah, no, I mean, I... Yeah, it is uncomfortable still. But I guess it's it was expected. Yeah. So, yeah, it was, like, bad, but, like, expectedly bad. Not unexpectedly bad, which is a different emotion. Yeah. Like, the fucking half black face <laughs> hunting scene. Sam and Dean are walking out of the house and they mentioned that they locked Missy in a closet. <laughs> um, and yeah, she lies to them and tells them that Papa Bender was trying to escape and she shot him. But all of them sort of look at each other so I feel like they're all aware that she's lying. Yeah. And the police are about to show up to this house and Kathleen says, hey, you should probably head out before they get here. And Dean asks, well, he says, I don't mean to press our luck, but we're kind of in the middle of nowhere. Could we catch a ride? And Kathleen says, nope, start walking. <laughs> and Sam's like a polite little boy. And he's like, sounds great to me. Thanks. And Dean apologizes for what happened to Kathleen's brother. Yeah, she starts tearing up and she says that it was really hard not knowing what happened to him. I thought it would be easier once I knew the truth, but it isn't really. Which, ugh. I mean, okay. I feel like, okay, so we've talked about how women in Supernatural do not seem like people, um, besides Cassie and Missouri. I feel like Kathleen 
seems more like a person than a lot of other women in Supernatural. Have you gotten that vibe too, or am I just... Is that just me? I think the, her actress is really good. Yeah. And, like, yeah. she was able to make the character feel alive about the writing yeah i don't she think she was given sell enough. her even though she didn't make sense yeah i mean she yeah. made some sense and like i i wouldn't say it's the writing i would say it's the actor okay so I, yeah i'm glad that it was mostly the part of the acting and not the writing that made her seem more like a person because i know later like supernatural has this bad habit of like Oh, we'll make some women people, but like just the cops, like just Jody and Donna. So yeah. I was like, oh god, does this start early? Yeah. But no, I think, yeah, her writing was still subpar, so this is more of an acting choice that caused her to be more like sympathetic or whatever. Yeah. Like when, yeah. when, when she was standing there and she they were all like kind of nodding at each other when she says that she, she yeah. shot the guy because he uh, tried to escape. It's like, oh, okay, so, like, I, 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 can, I can empathize, you know? Like, the acting is actually right. really good. So, yeah. Finally, we cut to, like, this high shot of Sam and Dean walking down a road in the dark. Dean says, never do that again. Sam says, do what? And Dean says, go missing like that. Yeah, which is sweet. Like, obviously Sam can't stop being kidnapped, but, you know, it's Dean's way of showing concern. Um, yeah, Sam says, you were worried about me, and, like, is making fun of him for it, which is, I guess, par for the course yeah. in Supernatural. <laughs> yeah, and Dean's like, if you vanish like that again, I'm not looking for you. Um, and they're teasing each other. Sam's like, heard that you got beat up by a 13-year-old girl getting rusty there, kiddo. And they're just sort of laughing and talking as they walk off, and that's the end of the episode. Okay, I have a question. Was it ever explained how they took the people in the first place? Like, under the car? How does that work? Did they just, like, sneak I under the car? I, they were just- they just dragged them under the car, I guess? I don't know. <laughs> it's so unnecessary, like, the car thing is so unnecessary. Well, it's just so that we don't know that it's people until way later, but I guess there are better ways to show it, because I know, isn't it- Give me shelter. Like, the person is human. The person who is doing the things is human, and they also do, like, the whole gets taken by a teddy bear thing to, like, lure you away from the <laughs> idea that it's a human. God. <laughs> it's very fun. Yeah. So anyway, that's how the episode ends. So what did you think of this one, Crystal? I mean, yeah, I feel like this this episode felt like a different genre than Supernatural usually is. And I feel like, like I, as someone who hasn't engaged in much horror, I found this horror pretty fun. But I also, you know, as we've mentioned, have an issue with just the backwoods poor country people being evil and crazy being a horror trope in the first place yeah uh, i'm gonna say that you know how in faith we were complaining that only the beginning was contrary to a supernatural episode but the rest is just a case episode i think this is an example of one where the beginning is contrary to like how supernatural usually goes and it continues on for the rest of the episode so mm -hmm. it doesn't feel like yeah just a case episode like it feels like there's a spice to it <laughs> mm -hmm. so th i thought that was really fun and again i think this episode is better than the faith i'm so mean but like, <laughs> but like it's it's the one that i can compare it to i can't wait until we get to dog teen afternoon and you say i think this episode is better than faith <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just I'm comparing the two because they have like similar premises, yeah. right? Of like Dean right, almost dies right. and then Sam's like taken and they're yeah. It's like kind of similar in that it's not just a typical monster of the week episode. And so far these are the only mm -hmm. two that we have gotten so far that isn't also um plot heavy. So, uh best line, worst line. I like uh Papa Bender's Whole villain, villain monologue. monologue. Yeah, it's so much fun. Yeah, best hunt is human holding their life in your hands, seeing the fear in their eyes just before they go dark. 
makes you feel powerful alive. Like, hell yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say my best line is... I'm gonna go the comedic route <laughs> and say <laughs> I lost some weight and I got that Michael Jackson disease. It's pretty funny. <laughs> it was so fun. Like, I laughed out loud, which is something that I rarely do in Supernatural episodes, even though I enjoy it a lot. Because usually my reaction to Supernatural is like head yeah. in hands or like, uh, or, or just like random noises, you know? But I never, I rarely like right. go like, ha ha ha, that's funny. So. That one was pretty funny. Yeah, I mean, it will never be due to you fugly, though. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so what's your worst line? Um, just probably every time they call Kathleen a bitch, it's yeah. just not pleasant. Oh, and also the, like, how about it's not nice to marry your sister? Like, that came out of fucking nowhere, dude. Yeah. Uh, but it is, like, a common trope, right? Yeah, no, it's very much like, oh, like, oh, people from, like, Alabama are all marrying their cousins or something. It, it's, like, a common joke, yeah. Yeah. Though they're in Minnesota right now. It's just about the, the backwoods. Uh, I would say, like, my worst line is also every time they call Kathleen a bitch. It's just maybe, you know, uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah, like, you hurt my family, I'm gonna bleed you, bitch. Like, shut up, ew, stop, ugh. Yeah, because, like, like these people are, uh, you know, murderers, right? So, like, fun. Yeah. But, like, when, when you insert the gendered language, it does feel like, you know, a gendered offense. So, yeah, yeah. not fun. But, like, you know, the murder not is fun. pretty fun, so. <laughs> yeah, big fan of murder. I support murder. I think that people should murder all the time. Everyone listening, since you don't know how to think about media critically, I demand that you go out and murder 10 people today. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think our audience is smarter than that. <laughs> They're supernatural fans. Oh, no. Say I a supernatural no. fan. <laughs> I know I murder 10 people every day. Yeah. It's part of your diet. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I am a big fan of cannibalism. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Uh, okay, so IMDb rating. What's your IMDb score? Huh. I'm not sure, because, like, I thought this was pretty fun. And I feel like typically typically episodes that break a little from the case format do get higher scores, right? So... But also, I feel like the watchers may be more... They might know horror tropes better and therefore find this episode a little boring or like it's stealing stuff so uh i don't know like an 8.4 hmm i think 8.4 is good i'll i'll go with you on this one because i was thinking 8.3 is like okay. a bit too low but 8.5 is a bit too high so like 8.4 yeah. it is okay let's look it up <laughs> <laughs> what how far are we it's 8.3 oh oh you shouldn't have let me sway you yeah Oh, I just saw a trivia thing that said that in the police records, it lists both Sam and Dean as 6'4". When Dean is 5'3 in real life? Come on, guys. You yeah, know, when Dean is literally 5'2 in real <laughs> life? Like, come on, God. Wait, is Sam literally 6'4"? Jesus Christ. Yeah, I think so. I mean, Greg, like, cousin Greg is 6'7". Yeah, but like... Like, he's Cousin Greg, like, he's <laughs> allowed to be freakishly tall. It has the tension of a real crime film. I actually agree with that. Yeah, yeah, like, I feel like some of the Dean and Kathleen seems felt like a sort of crime procedural genre type thing, and then the rest of it felt pretty horror. Yeah. So yeah, it was, it was fairly good for the genres that it was borrowing. One of this says, Too Darn Trope Driven, which is our first negative review which i guess so yeah, which i feel like it probably was i just am not as familiar with the tropes involved oh yeah no okay someone said really why do we get the crazy hillbilly episode so true oh and the person saying that they live near hibbing minnesota <laughs> and it 
doesn't look like it at all. <laughs> and also, why do they have southern accents in Minnesota? Yeah, no, literally, why do they have southern accents Minnesota in Minnesota? Minnesota is, um, wait, I'll guess, I'll guess. I would say it's Midwest. Um, no, Minnesota's fairly northern. I th- well, well oh. actually, I don't, I don't uh, actually, well, I thought, I thought Donna had a yeah. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah. Minnesota's in the upper Midwest. Wow, so, I'm yeah, so good. Yeah, we are both, right? <laughs> I'm basically yeah, American at this point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, right. And no, this person's right, yeah. They said, yeah, why is it assumed that because we're people in northern Minnesota, we're crazy enough to kill people for the heck of it? Why do we get that stereotype? So true, I am DV person. Yeah, you should give it to the southern people. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Ugh. Go, go, be classes towards people in the south instead. Uh, to <laughs> clarify, um, that that was a joke. Um, yeah. So, yes. Yeah. All classism is bad, but I also think that this person, yeah, is like d- deserves to feel angry at this portrayal of northern Minnesota. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, I think that's it for this episode of Busty Asian Beauties. Next time, we will be talking about Season 1, Episode 16, Shadow. Leave us a rating or a review wherever you get your podcasts. Follow us on social media and also look at the Supernatural Writer's face gradient. <laughs> we are on Twitter at twitter.com slash beautiespodcast and on Tumblr at bustyasianbeautiespod.tumblr.com. Our official tag is BabPod, B-A-B-P-O-D. Uh, thank you to everyone who has uh, tipped us in Kofi. And you can email us on any feedback, comments, or inquiries at bustasianbeautyspod at gmail.com. See you guys next time. Bye. Bye.